Bills Mafia and the Buffalo Bills are marked landed safely down in Miami for tonight's Thursday night football matchup against the Dolphins. So let's see if Josh Allen and crew can win tonight in the 305 with Matt Perino, Bills beat reporter for Syracuse.com. Matt, what's going on, my man? How you feeling down there in the beautiful weather of Fort Lauderdale? You are literally getting me in the middle of a nice, brisk afternoon walk here in uh, Fort Lauderdale before I head over to the stadium. Um, it's beautiful, man. It, I'm from Buffalo. We're about to go into the dark, <laughs> dark winter. So I got to take it into the sunshine. And there were some worries about some rain right now. I mean, it is clear as heck. It looks great down here. For now. I play with the Dolphins. It, bro, I live down there. It, it'll rain. <laughs> it rains for no reason down there. So you're marked safe from the rain for right now. But it could got switch you. up at any point. All right, but let's get into this game, man. Before we get into this game tonight, they square up. Are there any any injury updates that we need to be mm. aware of? So there is. Raheem Mostert won't play for the Miami Dolphins, and that's a huge deal. But they still have Devon Achan, and he is going to be uh, a game-time decision. He's also banged up a little bit with an ankle, but the expectation is that he'll play. Uh, he'll, he'll work it out before the game. Uh, but this run game for the Miami Dolphins, it's really good. Jalen Wright's their rookie. Uh, he's the next guy in the pipeline that Mike McDaniel just keeps getting these guys over and over again. So the Bills are going to have to deal with some speed on both sides of the ball. And defensively, they don't have Taron Johnson. He's dealing with a forearm injury. He won't play in this game. They're all pro nickel cornerback. To not have him going against Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle, and company, that is a huge development. They're going to have to really lean on their front. Greg Rousseau had three sacks last week, defending AFC defensive player of the week. He's going to have to have a big game in Miami, his old stomping grounds after playing at the U uh, in college. Those you boys, they show up and they show out when they're back down in Miami, though. <laughs> so that might be a blessing in disguise. You already talked about how banged up the Dolphins' backfield is this early in the season. So what's your initial thoughts on the game, man? Like, is the Bills have had the Dolphins' number in the past. So is it safe to say that this is a game the Buffalo Bills should win? Yeah, definitely. It's a game they should win. They have the best player on the field. His name's Josh Allen. He's played in Miami just about as well as he's played in any stadium, hard rock uh, in the country. So I think going into this game, if it's close in the fourth quarter, Josh Allen always gives the Bills a chance to win. Defensively, there are certainly some questions, but this is also a defensive coordinator uh, or defensive-minded head coach in Sean McDermott, D.C. last year, who is ultra familiar with Tua Tagovailoa and how to kind of muddy things up for him. This is going to be a big night. For Ed Oliver, Daquan Jones, who abused this Miami Dolphins interior offensive line when they played in Miami last year, right before he suffered the torn pec muscle and missed most of the season. So I'm looking at that interior defensive line for the Bills. Can't give up any big plays. Have to sure things up in the red zone. They gave up uh, two touchdowns and two field goals to the Cardinals last week. You know, you let Miami, or Miami drive down the field. They're going to put the ball in the end zone. So you got to make sure that you hold up in the red zone. That's a big piece and key in this game for me. Let's talk offensively. You mentioned Josh Allen being the best uh, player on the field. He connected with, I believe, like nine or ten different pass catchers in week one. Look, it looks like it's going to be a uh, pass by committee in terms of this season's offense now that Stephon Diggs is down in H-Town. You think that's better for Allen, or do you think that eventually a wide receiver one needs to emerge in this offense? Yeah, and I think that I do think that a wide receiver one or like a dependable number one option would benefit Josh Allen. But I also think in the interim, until they figure out what that's going to be, whether that be in 2024 or 2025, that's another thing. This team has a ton of money starting next season to maybe – really add around Josh Allen. They had their offensive line pretty much intact for the next couple of seasons. Now it's about building those uh, that wide receiver room out. But for the interim, I think that there's something to be said for not being able to key in on one guy. And now the problem with that is, like, who do you rely on when you need to make plays? And to me, that's Khalil Shakir. I saw him up on the screen there for a moment. And, listen, that's a guy you saw last week, his run after the catch ability. He had two plays in that game, a third and six where he catches the ball on a short reception, bounces off two or three would-be tacklers, turns it into a 19-yard game, takes a screen for a nine-yard touchdown, bouncing off two more would-be tacklers, and then landing on his head, flying into the end zone backwards. It, it was pretty unbelievable play. So he likes the pass catches around him. And I think over the course of the season, you're going to see Keon Coleman get more and more comfortable in this offense. Joe Brady more and more comfortable with what – he likes to do. They started off in a, in a big way last week. That play down the sideline, 
get him in one-on-one -on -one man coverage and watch him work. And I, I think he's going to put a lot of pressure potentially tonight on Jalen Ramsey, who's dealing with a little bit of a hamstring injury. He's been on the injury report all week. He's going to play. But that's something to watch in this game. And I think Keon Coleman, under the bright lights tonight, I, 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 he's one of my key players to watch. Hey, Keon Coleman has been – so much fun to, to listen to and watch throughout the offseason in terms of all this video. Now's the time that he can show that he's the real deal on the field if he can give some work to Jalen Ramsey, one of the top corners uh, in the NFL. You mentioned guys flying around in the end zone. Josh Allen had himself won a uh, nice little Saquon leap in the end zone against the Cardinals. Are you going to be the, t the guy that tells JA-17 to slide or get down, or is that just something Bills fans are, are going going to have to live with this season because he's going to have to put this team and this offense on his back. Yeah, I think that this has been a, a, a narrative for the last six years, like protecting Josh Allen at all costs. Sean McDermott's talked about Brandon Bean's talked about it. He's not listening to me. I'll tell you that right now. And I think part <laughs> of it is like when they get out onto the field, like when the bullets are flying, it, it's so easy to say, yeah. I want to play smart football. But it's a whole nother thing when you see wide open spaces and you get out in the run game and you are 6'6", 250, and you can you know, bowl guys down like, like you're a linebacker on offense. I, I think that there's something to, to be said for leaning into that. Now, you know, he's banged up. He's dealing with that injured hand. So we're going to have to watch that tonight, how big of a deal that is. But I don't think you're ever going to be able to coach completely out of Josh Allen his ability to be physical in the run game or just his ability to take hits. And it's something that you just kind of sit back, close your eyes sometimes if you're yeah. Bill's Mafia and hope for the best. All right, let's Riverside and talk about the defense. We could be uh, – we could have a potential shootout tonight. So how do you think the Bills defense is going to match up against Tua and the Dolphins offense? Uh, it's a matchup-driven league, and it's an adjustment driven league and I think that's one of the things people don't talk enough about Sean McDermott his ability to adjust I mean the, the Dolphins might come out and have a lot of success early in this game but can they sustain it can they find a way to limit Greg Rousseau's big impact when they needed plays from Greg Rousseau in the second and third quarter against the Cardinals last week all he did was deliver tackles for a loss stacks on Kyler Murray and listen two is not fleet of foot if he doesn't find his first second read and he's got to make a second decision or an adjustment in play that's when Greg Rousseau becomes a huge problem at Oliver as well. So they got to really get after him uh, as pass rushers. And I think Sean McDermott's ability to make adjustments over the course of this game kind of mix up the way that he brings pressures and different looks and try to confuse Tua. That's when they've had a lot of success as a defense in the past. All right, let's play a game of ifs. And I know everyone's like, oh, if ifs and buts were candy and nuts, then every day would be Christmas. But if the Bills <laughs> do win this game this early in the season – do they now become the biggest threat out of the AFC behind the Chiefs? They're still the biggest threat to the Chiefs in the AFC. I mean, I watched that Baltimore team last week. It's the same Baltimore team that's been in the playoffs the last couple of years. And Lamar Jackson continues to not do enough to put his team over the top in big games. Same thing can be said for Tua. I know Houston's a really exciting team. And they got a lot of weapons down there. But until you do it in the playoffs and you prove it on that big stage, listen, Josh Allen – has been as close to beating uh, Patrick Mahomes as anybody, not named Joe Burrow. And I don't know what's going on in Cincinnati right now. So for me, it is still the Chiefs and the Bills, especially once you get down into the playoffs and you need somebody to go blow for blow with him, make big plays in the fourth quarter. I mean, Josh Allen has been, if you take the playoffs, just the playoffs, you can make an argument that statistically he's even been better than Patrick Mahomes with the way that he's played in the playoffs. His I think he's got one turnover in his career in the playoffs. It's been unbelievable, the switch that he flips. Uh, it's just about getting this defense to where it needs to be. Sean McDermott has done it year in and year out. And I think when you have Josh Allen, I know I sound like a broken record, but I still am leaning into that. Uh, the, the other team, though, out there is, like I mentioned, Houston. They can become that. But I, I'm going to kind of wait and see on that. How does that – how do they stay healthy? they got a lot of aging players and Joe Mixon and Stephon Diggs with what they want to do. Uh, C.J. Stroud has a long runway in year two. We know about the sophomore slump. Did that hit him at all? We'll see. It's going to be a Thursday night matchup that doesn't disappoint. Matt, tell the people they can find you, man. At Matt Perino on uh, X and then obviously the Shout Buffalo Bills football podcast on all of your podcast platforms. We'll be live after the game tonight. And this is going to be a good one. I can't wait to talk about, talk about I it. I mean, where are they going to find you in the club tonight? Are you going? No, I'm just joking. Uh, <laughs> we got to stay professional. No. We got to try to get you there. <laughs>
You, you can find me at a Hard Rock Stadium until 3 or 4 in the morning and then hitting my pillow before I got to catch a flight tomorrow. All right, hardest man, hardest, hardest working dude in the AFC East. Uh, thanks for uh, joining us, man. Thanks for having me, brother.